Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Resistor Network. And today I've got an interesting video for you. I was clearing out some data on my RAID array the other day, and I found that I had a complete video from about three years ago that I never edited or uploaded to YouTube. And around that time, I was actually building an electric skateboard. And this isn't like your ordinary DIY build. I actually wanted to achieve some pretty lofty goals. I wanted a minimum of 50 miles range and a top speed of at least 30 miles per hour. And um, I achieved all of those things, and I had this great board that I rode around all the time, and I just never uploaded the video. And there's a blog post on my blog, but, you know, that doesn't have all of the interesting visuals that you get from a video. And so, unfortunately, it looks like there's a small piece of that video missing. Uh, it's from the very end, but frankly, most of it is there, and most of it's kind of interesting. So I've got a quick little montage of some build and writing clips, and then I'm going to dive into the technical details for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and with that, Let's get started. Hey guys, so over the past four months or so, I've been working on an electric longboard. Um, I've been riding a boosted board for almost a year now, and I love it. Um, and about four or five months ago, I thought it'd be really fun to design my own and meet some really lofty goals. Um, I was looking for a top speed of somewhere between 25 and 30 miles per hour, but the most difficult, I think, was the range. I really wanted a board that would be able to go about 50 miles um, on one single charge, and I've achieved that. Um, so that, that. This board here is called Voyager. Um, that's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, it has a complete lighting system, it has a headlight, turn signals in the front wheel well, it's got ground effects on the side, and a brake light on the back. Uh, so this box up at the top here, that's, uh, that's the battery. Um, this is a really, really large battery. It's uh, 750 watt hours. Um, it's mounted to the board using um, 8 M5 screws, um, so it can easily be actually removed, and you can put a different size battery on here. Um, so I actually have plans to design a smaller battery that's lighter and um, you know, designed for shorter range trips, just flying around uh, the local area. Um, and then down in the bottom box here um, is the motor drive. Uh, so inside here there are two VESCs, which are designed by Benjamin Vader, as well as uh, some uh, bypass capacitors, a 5 volt regulator for the LED lighting system. Um, you know, I would have used the onboard regulator, but um, there are so many LEDs here that, uh, for thermal reasons, I thought it would be better to get an external regulator. Um, there's also the nunchuck receiver. Um, this board is actually controlled with a Nintendo Wii nunchuck. Um, in the future, there will be Bluetooth as well for streaming log data to a Raspberry Pi. Um, that will be in my backpack. It's not implemented yet, but it's planned. And then down here are some relatively large motors. Um, so I can give it a quick whirl. It's uh, super fast and super loud. And you can see the brake light here on my leg. It glows red. Um, and you can actually do it like a a uh, brake light without actually braking, which is nice if you just want to signal to someone that you're slowing down without actually engaging the motors, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, the battery life on this thing is just incredible. Um, the last ride I did was a 17 mile run, and um, when I got home I charged it back up to 100%, and I found that I had only discharged the battery uh, about 20 or 25%. Um, so the range is going to be very, very, very long on this board, which is super exciting. Um, I can't wait to take some really long runs with this thing. So in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the board. I'm going to crack open some of these boxes and explain how it works. And um, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> so before I crack open any of these boxes, um, I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, so like I said earlier, this is the battery. Uh, there's a connector on the side here for charging, and it's protected by a dust cap. Um, so you just unthread this nice little cover here, and then you can see the pins on the side there. And uh, this is the motor controller, and you can see I've already got a nice big scratch on it <laughs> from my uh, most recent run. These are the two motors, and this is the brake light. 
Um, so all of the components that you see here are actually 3D printed. So I've got handles on the side here. Um, I've got risers for the LEDs to kind of pitch them at a bit of an angle. Um, the brake light is housed inside of a pretty complex assembly, actually. Um, so the wires come in the back here, and then there's actually a channel in the plastic that it, the wires route out through the side here. Then the, the, the data goes across and then comes back up the side and then shoots back in through yet another channel and then continues around the board. Um, and you can actually say the same for the, for the, front, um, for the front light. Um, so yeah, once again, this is the motor controller. Um, and the, you can see the, these are the large um, three-phase cables coming out to drive the BLDCs. And then this actually here is just the LED data and LED power. Um, and so the LED power comes out and then splits and goes around the board um, to divide the load and make sure that we don't get a voltage drop as you go around. And then the data, um, it's kind of an optical illusion here, comes out the one side, loops through here, and then goes around in a counterclockwise direction. Um, and then it actually comes back into the box through this cable here. And then eventually I might, might decide to add some LEDs on the surface of the box to show things like low battery, um, or maybe just for, for more lighting, why not? Um, so yeah, the first thing I'm going to open here is the motor controller, um, and inside that you'll get to see um, the two VESCs that I mentioned earlier. So we just... These are just simple M5 screws, uh, and there's four of them. And there we have it. So the first thing you'll notice, uh, the two VESCs, that's the most important part of this board, I think. Uh, they drive the motors and um, take care of a couple of other things, um, like driving these LEDs here, uh, communicating with the nunchuck remote and so on. Um, this here is a 5 volt regulator. Um, it's actually a pretty nice one. It'll take an input voltage of anywhere between 9 and 60 volts, uh, which basically means I can connect almost any battery here, a 12S LiFi pack, a 12S LiPo pack. Um, that would all be fine because this regulator and the VESCs can all tolerate that high voltage. Um, there are also some very, very large capacitors here. Um, they're basically bypass capacitors and they avoid huge fluctuations in the voltage when you, when you accelerate very harsh. Um, there's a, a little link here between the two VSCs so they can communicate via CAN bus. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so this enclosure is interesting. I use heated insets um, so that you can actually remove the lid uh, relatively easily. Uh, there's a rubber gasket as well. Uh, it's a two millimeter O-ring that's kind of slotted out through the entire case. Um, and then the, the back of the lid actually has a, a mating surface for that. Um, so that keeps the dust down. It's not totally dust proof, but definitely better than not having it. Um, and also the, you can see the, where the wires route at the back. Um, so they're first, they're hot glued in place for structural reasons. And then um, I use some uh, window sealant to keep out as much of the dust as possible. Though I imagine, you know, occasionally I'll have to crack this box open and, you know, spray it with a little bit of um, compressed air just to, just to clean it up. Um, so that's pretty much it. Power comes in here through an XT90 connector, which is actually really common in the hobbyist industry. Um, so I'll, I'll disconnect this here. Um, and this is actually the off switch. There is no off switch. You just disconnect this power. Um, so the, the XT90 connector that I used is actually an anti-spark module. Um, so what it has is the uh, plus side is actually split. It's not one piece of metal, it's actually two. Uh, the top half and the bottom half are isolated, and there's a resistor between them. Um, and so what that does is it allows these very large capacitors to charge up uh, before, um, before allowing the system to draw as much power as it wants. So it, it charges them through the 5.6 ohm resistor. Um, and that prevents sparking on the input. That was an issue I had um, in earlier versions when I was using some testing batteries and so on. Um, so the next step would be the battery box. Um, so what's interesting about this is it's actually a modular system. The battery box is held on by these, uh, there's four screws on this side and then there's four on the other side as well. Um, and that's really cool because you can actually change the battery depending on your needs. So if you find that um, on one day you're going to be, um, you know, just shooting around, uh, you know, your campus or, or something like that around local in your neighborhood, you don't want such a heavy battery, you can just swap out the big one for a little one. So actually I'll leave it on for now, but what I will do is I'll remove the lid. I'll remove the lid of the battery box so you can see inside it. So this one actually has nine screws, um, and you'll see the reason for that in just a second. So when we remove this lid, you will see the battery. Uh, so this is a very, very large battery. Um, there are 60 LG MJ1 cells in here. These are 3.5 amp hour batteries that can discharge uh, constantly at 10 amps. Um, so I've put them in a 10S 6P configuration, which means um, 
the cells are composed of six cells in parallel and then 10 of those in series. Um, and the idea here is that I'm distributing the relatively large load of the motors over many, many, many small batteries. Um, so for thermal reasons, that's good. It keeps the pack nice and cool. The surface area is relatively large. Um, and it means that the discharge is going to be relatively efficient, um, which is nice. Um, so you can see here, this is the aircraft connector. The uh, charging is done through a smaller set of wires um, here. And then these are actually balance leads. So you can measure the voltage of every cell in the pack. This is an unprotected pack. Um, there's no fuses, there's, there's no uh, balance board, there's nothing like that. Um, this is intended to be used with care. <laughs> um, I wouldn't want to hand this to just anyone, this is something that I know how to use. Um, and, and basically you connect a cable here, which I actually have on my desk, which is here. So you connect this cable to the side of the board, and what it gives you is it gives you two banana leads, which is where the charger is um, applying most of the current, and it gives you these balance leads, which are used for measuring the voltage and uh, discharging individual cells if needed, um, if the pack gets out of balance. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much the battery. And if we go a little bit further, I mentioned earlier that there's uh, two sets of screws here on the front and here on the back. Uh, we can actually remove the battery from the board. And so that's pretty much it. I just have to give it a lift, and that's, that's the battery. Um, so those, those screws, obviously, they come out. Um, so the nice thing about this is that I can easily change this battery uh, with something else. Um, I, can, I could make more of these if I'm planning a very, very long trip where um, you know, I intend to be riding all day or something crazy like that. Um, I could easily bring a second one of these very large batteries in my backpack. Um, the other option would be, you know, if you're just shooting around the neighborhood, you could easily bring um, a smaller pack. So this is a 60 cell pack that are relatively low current cells. So I could build another pack that uses uh, slightly higher discharge cells at a reduced capacity, but only 30 of them. So it would be, it would be twice as thick. You can see this is very, very thick. Um, so it's not the kind of thing that you want to bomb around on. You know, there's a good chance that you might, you know, scrape the bottom of it if you go over a speed bump or something like that. But if you're going to be going long haul and you're just riding on the streets and you're relatively cautious, um, this is a nice backpack or a nice battery actually. Um, it's got the same design as the motor enclosure, heated insets to hold the lid on. Um, there are a lot more screws um, because the battery is actually supported by the lid when you flip it upside down. And you can see that here. There's actually some um, foam just for vibration dampening. And um, yeah, so because the battery is supported by these heated insets, I, I opted to put a lot more of them. Um, and I kind of fit them where possible. So I put one between the front mount. I put two around the rear, the, uh, I guess this is the rear of the, the front mount. And then I've got three on each side. And the same feature as the motor box, I've got a two millimeter O-ring that surrounds the entire box. And uh, so far this box actually hasn't breached. I haven't had any dust, which is very, very nice. So um, I actually did change the design slightly for this one. Um, the depth of the O-ring track is, is slightly shallower and the depth of the lip on the lid is slightly deeper. So basically the O-ring is more centered across both of the surfaces as opposed to um, set quite far back as it is in the motor mount, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, and another feature that I added to this board, which is a bit unusual for a long board, um, are these side handles here. So because this board is so heavy when you load it with a large battery, um, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or 30 pounds, um, the wood is actually quite sharp. So I printed these kind of uh, rounded handles. Um, you can see that they're, they're nice and smooth on the surface. Um, this is just printed with PLA. I may consider looking into uh, more elastic type materials in the future, but, but for now it's good enough. Um, and you know, that just helps it, uh, makes it easier to carry the board. And the other feature I mentioned earlier is the modular system. So basically you can see that the board is round. Um, so in order to mount a, a, you know, a battery pack to this thing, it's very difficult to print something that's the contour of this board. Um, I did that with the motor drive because it's not something that you change very often and you only really need like one copy of it. But for the batteries, there's a good chance you want to have a couple batteries, maybe two or three, and it takes forever to print them rounded. And, and to be honest, um, I'm worried about the vibration that would be induced as well because it's so heavy. Um, you know, you need to have the screws going through the board as opposed to just on the surface. So what I opted for was I created a, a plane actually. By uh, printing rounded components with a plane that runs across like this, um, it's really easy to mate a battery to the surface. Um, so I can show you the end. Basically, that's all how it looks. It's just kind of like a Lego. It just sits in the track. Um, and then the screws come down and lock it in place. Um, there's no vibration. I haven't had any issues with uh, noise being created by this battery, which is really great. 
Um, the battery itself is surrounded by foam, so there's no chance of it vibrating inside the enclosure and creating some knocking noises. Well, unfortunately, that's where the video cuts off. But frankly, you got to see everything. The battery, motor drivers, the lighting system, and all the mechanical components that hold it together. So you got a pretty good overview of that board, and it is as good as it looks. I mean, I rode this thing all over the place. I did one run in the San Francisco Bay Area here that was about 50 miles on one charge, which was a complete blast. If you have any feedback about this build, feel free to leave it below. I will definitely read your comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. They're all pretty similar, and I don't publish videos too often, so I probably won't spam your feed. And that's all I've got for now. So with that, I will see you next time.